Today I'm going to be going through a cheap beginner's wide field setup for astrophotography to shoot Milky Way nightscape shots. I hesitate to use the word cheap because astrophotography is an expensive hobby. Some of this equipment was bought secondhand, which certainly helped, but compared to the bigger uh, deep sky rigs, which you'll be familiar with on this channel and other channels, then this is quite a cheap setup but I'll include all of the retail prices for this equipment and I'll also include what I paid when I bought it secondhand so that you can see the difference that can be made by just shopping around a little bit and buying things secondhand. Right, let's get into it starting from the bottom up. So the tripod that I use for this setup is a Manfrotto Element tripod. I bought this for £89 off Amazon. It's got a payload capacity of eight kilos not sure I'd want to go that heavy with it, to be honest. And it also included a really sturdy bull head, which is great, and it included a carry bag as well. It's not the cheapest tripod out there, but as you grow in astrophotography, you will learn to understand that stability is everything, and therefore the mount and the tripod are really the most important parts of your astrophotography setup. There is a tripod that you can get from Skywatcher for the Star Adventurer, I haven't used it. Looking online, it seems to get pretty good reviews and that only costs 69 pounds. So that's a bit of a saving for you there if you wanted to go for that. Another thing that I see people doing for stability is using an HEQ5 tripod or something like that, um, which obviously gives you a much more stable grounding for the uh, Star Adventurer to sit on top of. The only thing for me about that is that I think that's a great idea especially if you're doing that at home. For me, the Star Adventure is all about portability. It's all about picking it up and walking off with it to wherever it is that you want to go. And, and it could be a little hike somewhere and it could be somewhere that is a bit more difficult to get to. And so having a tripod that folds up into something that's sort of that small, only weighs a kilogram at the most and you can chuck it in a rucksack for me, that's what the Star Adventure is all about, but that's not to say that that's a bad idea. If you're using this out in your garden, which I have multiple times, and I've always felt as though I wish I had a sturdier tripod when I'm at home. So it's not that I wouldn't recommend this tripod. I think there are better tripods out there, so I would shop around a little bit. I'll link some tripods in the description down below, but this one has served me well for setups like this, when I was first starting out in astrophotography and using the Skywatcher 72 ED, which I still use now on my bigger mount, then the with the telescope, the Star Adventurer, the counterweight and the camera all attached, it started to be a bit too much for this tripod, to be honest. And I couldn't really extend the legs to the height that they are now for this video because it's just not stable enough for astrophotography. Sitting on top of the tripod, we obviously have the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. This is the Mark I Star Adventurer. There's obviously now the Mark II, which means you might be able to pick up a few Mark I's um, secondhand quite cheap. Brand new, this costs £269. The version 2 costs £329, so it costs a little bit more. Skywatcher, I think, have increase prices across the whole range of products, not just the Star Adventurer. But you might be able to pick up a Mark I cheaper for somebody that may have traded it in for the Mark II version. Obviously the Mark II version giving you the Wi-Fi capability as well that the Mark I doesn't have. This is the Star Adventurer Pro Pack and with the Pro Pack comes the uh, counterweight and bar, as you can see behind me, this L bracket for your camera to sit on top of. And it also comes with this little adapter to have a ball head sat on top of as well. And you can dual mount two cameras when you're using this L bracket, which I think is of benefit to quite a lot of people because I see that quite a lot on social media. There are of course other star trackers available, the iOptron Skyguider Pro and the Move Shoot Move tracker, just a couple that springs to mind are others out there on the market as well. There's quite a few of them now, to be honest. But to get those long exposures, longer than 30 seconds, you're gonna need a star tracker to counteract the Earth's rotation so that you don't start getting star trails as you're taking your images of the Milky Way. And sitting on top of the Star Adventurer is a Canon 650D DSLR camera, and I have had that Astro modified. I bought this secondhand for 180 pounds from Camera Jungle. 
and it only had I think just over 7,000 shutter actuations at the time of buying so it was almost like new there were no marks on it at all. The great thing about the 600-650 range is that it's got the articulating screen so that um, when you are taking your test exposures or just setting up for framing your target and things like that it's a real neck saver so that you're not having to sort of crouch down on the ground and, and tilt your head back like that is a, is a real neck saver because you can just stand there and look at the screen. The 650D is quite an old camera in the Canon range now so you don't really buy it new anymore as such um, but if you wanted to just buy an entry-level Canon DSLR then you're talking £400 and then that starts to go up as you move away from the entry level and more towards the sort of uh, full frame camera at the more expensive end of the spectrum in the Canon range. And so 180 quid for a second hand camera was an absolute bargain. And the Astro modification I got done at cheapastrophotography.com and that cost 75 pounds. And what the modification does is allow more red light to hit your sensor by removing a filter and therefore when you're taking images of nebulae such as the rosette nebula or the orion nebula then it allows you to capture more of that red light that your camera would largely ignore otherwise and when i was looking around online earlier just to look at what the prices are second hand currently places like uh, mpb.com which i'll leave a link to in the description down below have 600Ds starting at £140 and they've got 650Ds at around £200. So you can see that starting at £400 for an entry level DSLR which would come with a kit lens so you do get that extra but like me I already had a DSLR so I didn't need the kit lens so for the body only starting at 140 quid is an absolute bargain you can save yourself quite a lot of money that way. And the lens that's attached to the camera is the Samyang or Rokinon 14mm f 2.8 and that is a really popular lens for astrophotographers who are doing nightscapes milky way shots because 40 millimeter is a really wide field of view especially if you have it on a full frame sensor this is a crop sensor so it is cropped in slightly but 40 millimeters cropped or not is still a very wide field of view and f 2.8 that aperture is really wide open so you're gathering a lot of light onto your sensor and you'll get much more detailed uh, Milky Way images than what you would do with just a kit lens for example. Now I bought the lens on eBay for 185 quid. Brand new, this is about 360 quid depending on where you buy it from but the cheapest I found it new was 360 quid and therefore 185 quid is just five pounds more than half price. So I essentially got that lens half price and there isn't a mark on it. And then there's the accessories that go along with this kit. So there's a remote shutter release cable. I bought this for £15 on Amazon and what this will do is allow you to put your camera into bulb mode and therefore allow you to take longer than 30 second exposures. So you can take as long exposures as you want. So I generally with this gear would take sort of two minute exposures and I can have a delay before starting the exposures. I can leave a bit of time in between images just to allow the sensor to cool down slightly, especially during those warm summer evenings. And there are loads of them available on Amazon for all types of cameras, but a uh, word of warning, just make sure that you buy the correct one for your model of camera. It's not a case of this will work with all Canons or all Nikons, etc. You need to make sure that you buy the correct one for your specific camera. So in total then, if I was to buy all of this kit brand new straight out the box it would cost about 1200 pounds or 1600 dollars at the current exchange rate however because i bought some of this second hand it actually only cost me just over 800 pounds 813 pounds which is 1100 dollars so you can see that's quite a substantial saving 400 pounds or 500 dollars that's quite a substantial amount of money that you can then put towards other equipment. So you might want to buy a filter or two filters, or you might want to start saving up for something like uh, William Optics Red Cap. And if you wanted to get into deep sky astrophotography but don't quite know where to start, then go ahead and click into this video right here where I walk you through my deep sky astrophotography setup that I use at home. All right, I'll see you over there.